Hey guys, this is Mrs. Patel. If you are watching this, you need a little help with cells, cell theory, and cell structure and function. Um, I'm going to do my absolute best to get this video in under 15 minutes, but there's a lot of information to cover. So let's give it a shot. Um, cells are the smallest unit of life. Most are microscopic. You typically can't see them um, with your naked eye. That's what microscopic means. It's the smallest thing that's considered alive. The first scientist to discover the cell was Robert Hooke. And he basically looked at cork under his microscope that he built himself. And he saw a row of these empty boxes, kind of looks like this. And he thought they looked a lot like um, the cell that monks used to live in in monasteries, which were just basically perfect empty squares that had a bed in it and very little else. So he coined them cells because that's what they reminded him of. There are three parts of the cell theory that the scientists, including Robert Hooke and some of the other ones as they continued to make more discoveries, made. There are three basic theories or uh, uh, rules of cells and how they should be classified. All living things, if it's alive, it's made up of a cell. All living things are made of cells. The second part, smallest living units of structure and function of, of all organisms is the cell. The cell is the smallest unit of life. Anything that's alive is made of a cell. And the cell is the smallest thing that's considered alive. The organelles inside a cell are not alive. The cell is. And the third, all cells come from other cells or pre-existing cells. This basically finally got rid of that idea of spontaneous generation, which was life from non-life, where you could have frogs come from mud and maggots from meat. They didn't know where they were coming from. Now we know that the only way you can have cells pop up is they come from other cells. These are the three parts of the cell theory. Now, as part of the cell theory, the cells are the smallest unit of life. So all these organelles inside this plant cell, none of these are alive. But this entire plant cell, that is living. This neuron cell is living. This red blood cell is a living cell. However, these things, viruses, they are not considered living. They themselves are not cells. They infect cells and take them over, but they aren't cells. So none of these things are alive. All of these guys are. Let's look at what all cells, no matter what type of cell, what they all have. They all have a membrane. They all have cytoplasm. That's that really thick jelly fluid. They all have at least a couple of organelles. And they all have an area where DNA is found. There are two main types of cells. There's prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells, pro rhymes with no. That means there's no nucleus, okay? They are so simple. Literally all they have is DNA in there and some ribosomes. That's it. Eukaryotic cells, you rhymes with do. And you have eukaryotic cells. You and do do means they do have a nucleus. These are plants and animal cells. You are an animal, okay? So you have a eukaryotic cell. Now, prokaryotic cells, it is the theory that they are the first cell on Earth because they are so, so simple. They have, the basic structure is they have these flagella, which help them swim. They have cell walls cell capsules, and cell membranes on the outside. And then on the inside, they have cytoplasm, ribosomes, and DNA. That's it. And there's no nucleus. It's called naked DNA. Ooh, scandalous. Prokaryotic cells, the DNA is circular. It's a big, if you took this big, weird spaghetti looking thing and stretched it out, it would be in a perfect circle shape. They don't have organelles that are bound by a membrane. So they have ribosomes, but ribosomes don't have membranes. So no membrane bound organelles, like a nucleus, for example. The size is super small. 
They reproduce asexually, which is known as binary fission. They basically just make clones of themselves, which you can see happening here and here. And they are always unicellular. Uni means one. They're never more than one cell at a time. They can't build and make bigger prokaryotic cells. Could you imagine a bacteria the same size as a human? That would be crazy. Okay, eukaryotic cells. Those, you rhymes with do, and that do means they do have a nucleus. They're very complex and large. The DNA is that double helix, okay? It's contained in a nucleus. They've got lots of membrane-bound organelles, and it's, they can reproduce asexually through mitosis. That's just cell division, making kind of clones of themselves, or sexually using meiosis. We're not gonna talk about sex, we're talking about making sperm and egg. They're usually multicellular, though protista is a unicellular organism that's a eukaryote. These include fungus, protists, plants, and animal cells. This is a typical example of an animal cell. You can see it is very complex. It is a eukaryotic cell, which means they do have a nucleus, which is this big guy here. The nucleus has the DNA in it. And all of these organelles, we're gonna go over each one quickly. They each have their own job. This is also a eukaryotic cell, but this is a plant cell. You can see there's a few big differences. This one, has a cell wall, it has chloroplasts, and it has a big central vacuole. None of these are existing in an animal cell. Animal cells do not have a cell wall, they do not have chloroplasts, and they do not have big giant central vacuoles that hold water. That's the basic difference between plant cells and animal cells. Cell walls, they're found in prokaryotes and eukaryotes, which I mentioned. They basically protect the cell. They protect and support the cell. They're not found in animal cells, okay? Only plant cells and prokaryotic cells. Cytoplasm, this is that jelly fluid. This is, an existing, this is existing in every type of cell. It's found in plants and animals prokaryotes and eukaryotes, and it's for supporting the cell, okay? That's the, the jelly fluid inside. Now, the cytoskeleton, ask yourself, what does your skeleton do? The answer is it provides structure and support. That's what a cytoskeleton does in a cell. It's got all these different filaments and tubes that support they anchor the organelles. You can see this is a mitochondria that's been kind of anchored. So everything's not just free floating f around inside your cell all crazy. It, everything's kind of anchored down by these cytoskeleton tubes and filaments. And it's found in all types of cells, plants and animals, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Cilia and flagella. You guys know what these are. Flagella, these are those whip-like extensions, these long tails. They're typically found in sperm cells. That's actually what you're looking at in this image is a sperm cell. Cilia, is, it behaves pretty similar, but it's much shorter. It's like short tails, and it's covered. cilia covers the organism. I'm sorry, I just had to pause really quick. I wanted to show you a quick image of what cilia looked like. Cilia is these tiny little hair structures covering the cell, and they, they move... Similar to, similarly to the flagella, which is featured over here, these are just like these whip-like structures. These kind of, the fuzz moves and helps the organism swim, okay? So back over here, these are found in animal cells, specifically sperm, but not in plant cells. Plant cells do not have cilia or flagella. They are found in prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells, which is the animal cells, but not in plant cells. Nucleus. Nucleus is eukaryotic cells only, both plants and animals, and this is the control center. This is where the big boss lives. This is where the DNA exists. It actually has two membranes, a double membrane, 
It contains chromosomes and this little structure on the inside called the nucleolus. The nucleolus is actually where, fun fact, ribosomes get made. The endoplasmic reticulum. This is that big one that you guys never want to pronounce. It stands for the, we typically call it just the ER for ease, endoplasmic reticulum. Basically, the ER, there are two types. There's rough and there's smooth. It's found in eukaryotic cells only, but both plants and animals have it. Um, let's talk about what each one does. The rough ER is called rough because it's been studded with ribosomes. Ribosomes are all over it. That gives it this rough texture, okay? And the ribosomes are responsible for making proteins. So, so are the endoplasmic, the rough endoplasmic reticulum essentially also makes proteins because ribosomes are on it. Otherwise, it's just sort of a holding place for ribosomes. Not all ribosomes are attached to the rough ER. They're called free. If they're not attached, they're called free ribosomes. They're free. The smooth ER basically makes lipids. That's its, one of its biggest jobs. And it's, um, it's difficult to see here. I'm gonna show you a better picture in a second. Um, the smooth ER does, is smooth because it does not have ribosomes attached. And basically it has enzymes that make carbohydrates and lipids. Its big job is to make lipids though. So if you're looking at the rough and smooth ER, if you, I'm hoping that on the EOC, you're given an image of a cell that kind of like this, and you're asked to identify an organelle, all right? Around the nucleus, the closest organelle to the nucleus that looks like this weird blobby thing, we have a couple of them. The closest one is the rough ER. Attached to it is the smooth ER, okay? This one makes proteins. This one makes carbs and lipids. They together are right next to the nucleus. So rough ER followed by smooth. Now you will see this little guy all the way off to the side here. If you ever see a space and it kind of looks similar, this is the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi body or the Golgi apparatus, this basically is the packaging and shipping center. It's going to get the carbs, the lipids, and the proteins, and it's going to package them up so it can ship it out of the cell. It's found in only eukaryotes, but both plants and animal cells have it. So proteins get made here, carbs and lipids get made here. They send little packages over to the Golgi that changes them up, packages them, and ships them out of the cell. Lysosomes. Lysosomes are super important. They are, think of those as Lysol. Lysol is the cleaner of the cell. It contains enzymes that break down molecules and clean up the waste in old cell parts. It can also digest invaders. So lysosomes can help use these enzymes to, to kill anything that's invading the cell. This is only in eukaryotes, but both plants and animal cells have it. Now, vacuoles, these are your storage. Think of like a kind of like a vacuum, but I really think of it more like a like a pantry. It holds food, water, and waste. Basically, there are two different types. There's really small ones in animal cells, okay, really small ones, and really, really big ones in plant cells. Those are the central vacuoles. Mitochondria, this breaks down food to make energy. Mitochondria does cellular respiration. So it takes glucose, makes energy. The mighty mitochondria, only in eukaryotic cells, but both plants and animal cells have it, okay? Chloroplasts make the food through photosynthesis. So chloroplasts make food. This is only in plant cells. Typically, there's always exceptions, but we're gonna, for ease, we're just gonna say plant cells have chloroplasts, not animal cells. Um, I'm gonna actually take that off so we're not even confused. So only plant cells, but it is found in eukaryotic cells, okay? And chloroplasts do photosynthesis to make food, then mitochondria takes that food and makes energy. Everything has a cell membrane or plasma membrane. 
it kind of keeps everything inside. This is a double layer of phospholipids and proteins. These are super important for cell transport. The last thing we're going to talk about is centrioles, and that is to...